in favor of basically scrapping the cap. The other legislation that we're very much in favor of is an improvement in benefits under Social Security. Um, and that is uh, the Deutsch bill, the, the legislation that's over in the House, H.R. 539, and it would uh, increase Social Security's protections, and in particular, it recognizes that cost of living for people over the age of 65 is, is, um, is very heavily health care costs, much more than people under the age of 65. Health care costs, as we know, are rising um, at a much steeper rate than any other cost of living is rising. As a result, most economists say that the current cost of living adjustment in Social Security is not sufficient to keep up with actual costs of living for people over 65 years old. So the economists have proposed what we call a, a CPIE, or a Consumer Price Index for Elderly, um, and that it would be much more realistic to allow people's Social Security benefits to actually keep up with um, increased costs of living. Unfortunately, um, the, the, that CPIE is not likely to pass anytime soon. Part of the reason is that the current deficit negotiations going on in Congress, actually uh, there, there is a, a plan to reduce the cost of living adjustment for Social Security recipients. It is a benefit cut. It's called the chained CPI. And if you hear about that anywhere in town, here's how it works. It cuts benefits, and, and the older you get, the steeper your benefit cut is. All right. All right. And if you poll women today, it's been, the polling's been going on for 10 or 15 years, what is the one thing that most women are most frightened of? The thing that they fear the most? Outliving their savings. Outliving their money, because women do live longer than men. Um, by the time a woman reaches the age of 90, if the change CPI were put into place, what happens is, Every year, her actual costs go up. Her health care costs go up substantially. So her, her real costs are going up like this. But with a chain CPI, which lowers the cost of living adjustment for Social Security, the, 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 her ability of Social Security to keep up with her expenses sort of gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And the gap just gets larger and larger. And the National Women's Law Center has just an astonishing uh, graphic on that. And it's, it's in, the, in the form of... Uh, grocery carts. Because at a certain point, as a woman reaches the age of 90, um, fully three weeks of food per month, it's, the, the gap between what her actual expenses are and the, the, um, the chain CPI COLA that doesn't keep up with her actual expenses amounts to something like three, uh, three weeks of food per month that she is not getting. So um, anybody touch the same chain CPI is a technical adjustment to Social Security and it's not really a cut. That's false. It is a cut um, to current beneficiaries, which brings me to my last point. Um, how many of you are familiar with the, the uh, super committee? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, right, good. Right. Um, um, they're operating in secret. Uh, the Sunlight Foundation, which is a good government organization, has circulated a sign-on letter, and I don't know if, if very many of the groups in this room got it. Um, the, uh, the request to the super committee is to start operating in the sunlight, and at least give your colleagues 72 hours to review whatever deal you come up with, if you come up with a deal, so that the senators and representatives who are not on the super committee will have at least 72 hours to review any kind of a budget deal. Um, it's not likely that that request will be honored. Uh, so we don't really know what they're doing. We, we keep hearing that despite the fact that the president has publicly said that Social Security should be off the table, that it's in fact back on the table in the form of a chain CPI. And in fact, Democrats are talking about uh, agreeing to a chain CPI without any corresponding um, sensible taxation on millionaires. Mm -hmm. So Jan Schakowsky has a bill to tax millionaires. Once you've made your first million bucks, that gets taxed just like the rest of it, 28-35%. Okay. But after that first million, you'd be paying 45% on the million to, to 20 million, and then it goes up a little bit. It never gets up beyond 49%. And it, it gets up to 49% for those who are making $200 million per year. Oh, no. All right. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. So let's let's feel sorry. For that. And oh no, oh no, the, the half of the members of the super committee are adamantly opposed to any kind of tax reform along those lines. So at this point, most people in the progressive committee and uh, progressive community, and very definitely including the National Organization for Women, we are telling people no deal. No deal is better than a bad deal. And what we're hearing is that we're very likely to get a bad deal, and we don't want it. So um, if, if when, you're, when you're on the Hill, when you're, if you're talking about the super committee, please, I mean, please go and, and reinforce that. Finally, on Thursday at 10 o'clock in 608 Dirksen, go to the rally. <laughs> it's a rally to support Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. These are all programs that disproportionately serve women. And these are also programs, by the way, that in being administered, they disproportionately employ women. And uh, so we really need to have a huge showing at 608 Dirksen, 10 o'clock in the morning, um, to encourage the senators to not accept any cuts to any of these crucial programs and to insist on taxing the people who can most afford it. Thank you.